Welcome to the C3 News Show. My name is Youssef and I'm your host for today. Let's jump into the news. Stormwind has prepared something for us. Indeed, there has been a lot of news this month. Starting with Berlin. On May 20th, the German Bundestag passed the EID law, which aims to bring the functionality of the German ID card to people's smartphones in an effort to make identification online faster and easier. The new law also permits each federated state of Germany to establish a central database for storage of biometric photographs and matching signatures of their citizens. Germany's police and intelligence services may quickly get access to these datasets by means of automatically processed requests. The CCC and FIF submitted a joint statement for the parliament hearing. Links to the full details and the video recording of the hearing are in the show notes. Berlin and Brussels. Also on May 20th, the German parliament passed a reformed version of the German copyright law, coming into effect on June 7th. Online platform operators, which are affected by the new legislation, are given a grace period until August 1st, when they need to have all necessary technology in place and operational. The copyright law has been reformed in order to be compliant with the European Directive on Copyright in the Digital Single Market, which made a lot of news about two years ago. In March 2019, many people raised their voices against Article 13, as it was named back then. Protest rallies have been held in many countries of the European Union. Nevertheless, the directive was passed in the European Parliament and required EU member states to implement it in their own national law within two years' time. Strasbourg. Back in 2013, Edward Snowden revealed the extent to which intelligence agencies employed bulk data interception and mass surveillance. In the same year, the first complaints were filed to the European Court of Human Rights. Now, on the 25th of May 2021, almost eight years later, the court released its ruling, asserting that the bulk interception of data violates both Article 8, private life, as well as Article 10, freedom of expression, of the European Convention on Human Rights. The ruling does not write out ban mass data collection, but it calls for significant improvements like safeguards against abuse and stricter oversight on, of the intelligence agency's activity. As a consequence, it is anticipated that many states will review and change their regarding national law. The Internet The conference Republica has taken place as an online event from May 20th to May 22nd. The program under the tagline In the meantime alludes to how our societies are stuck in a limbo between foil plans of a pre-pandemic era and a post-pandemic future that is yet to be shaped. One of the speakers has been Margaret Vestager, Executive Vice President of the European Commission, presenting her visions for a digital Europe. Prominent topics have been biometric surveillance and artificial intelligence. Vestager was quoted saying that Europe will not become a continent of mass surveillance. The recording of the panel discussion will be available soon on the Republica YouTube channel. Amsterdam. As we already reported in our last show, MCH had to be cancelled. Good news? Not completely. The Dutch hacker camp usually takes place every four years and has now been postponed to next year, 2022. Therefore, some more coordination with the other hack camps is needed in order to avoid conflicting time schedules. The largest camp, the EMF, will probably lead the planning. If you have any more questions about any of the topics, please have a look at show notes and now back to the studio. Thank you, Stormwind. And now Zephos prepared an interview with the Hack Lab 57 North. If you thought this is a whiskey, you're right, it is. But it's also a Hack Lab in Aberdeen. Let's check it out. The number you have dialed has been changed. The new number is... Uh, I met yeah. Kev at the Scott Consulate, and mm -hmm. I know he's from Aberdeen, and he's taking care about their hack base, uh, 57 North. Huh? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. W what is the background? What, uh, how did you get there? We started after we'd, we'd been in 57 North for a while, and then we started going away to the camps. I think some of them had been to the EMF camp in England, and I'd been to CCC, so we kind of went away to CCC. Um, that's when we kind of started up. What's, what's now the Scottish Consulate, which is the kind of roving group of hackers from Scotland and further afield that go away to uh, 
the International Hacker Council. Yeah, I, I, you meet. I met you uh, a week ago in uh, in the two day space of RC3. The, one of the members made a, an area for the Scottish consulate, and then that was just transposed onto uh, a friendly friendly guy from Holland who's who's hosting it. So we've hosted our our weekly meetings in there. What are you doing now in the upcoming months? You think what is what's going to happen oh, with your well, space? Yeah, I mean. But, our hackerspace is lucky. We've got quite a bit of room, so we're not restricted by the distancing in there. So yeah, we're going to take a look there later, huh? But uh, tell yeah, me what, yeah, well, what, what, what is in there? What is in there? What is the specialty of the yeah. house? Technology-wise, I don't know. I mean, we've got quite a few people who do network, um, like actual kind of computer network operation stuff. So there's a, f- bit of, a few people that are doing that, but it's so, it's so weird. I mean, I'm an, I'm an electrical technician, there's other ones that are web developers. There's this, so so we end up with a lot of stuff like that in there. Um, in the, well, you'll see. I'll have a look around the space later on. Mm-hmm. We've got like a, we've got a three D printer, but we've got some other ones. We recently got some SLA three D printers, um, which we haven't set up yet. But decent equipment. Yeah, okay. I think so. I think and so. planning for planning for uh, online workshops or so on, because I noticed you have a media. Uh, installation uh. yeah we've got um i don't know i mean that was something that was something that i put together just because i uh, thought that it would be useful for people if they were wanting to do a demo of something to have a setup yeah. which has a reasonable light it's got a camera facing down so you can do this tabletop work and things like that um and one of the one of the members donated a, like a media computer so i put ubuntu studio on it Set up with front-facing camera, down-facing camera. I still need to do the lights around it. But see you soon. Thanks, right. Kev. See you, Thanks, man. man. Joe. Fifty-seven North. There's a longer version of the interview below here in the description. Feel free to visit them the next time you're in Aberdeen. Two events took place in March. One of them was the Chemnitzer Linux Tage. If you don't know how to spell it, just remove all the vowels from your keyboard and smash it real hard. Chemnitzer Linux Tage. If you want to know more about the Chemnitzer Linux Tage, we too, here it is. Instead of a fantasy world, CLT took place in a 2D version of the actual conference building, complete with lecture rooms, places to hang around and booths managed by the project teams. This was a welcome twist as it somewhat felt like the real event. Besides the Chemnitzer Linux Tage, there was also the Divok over Easter. Our team was there as well, and we're happy to provide you the links to our show below in the description. Next up, we have Chris with our podcast recommendations. With three categories, there's surely something for you too. An excellent way to learn new things is by listening to podcasts and to help you find your way through this vast landscape. Here's a couple of recommendations, and we've got three categories for you. First, two podcasts about space. And to be more precise, space history. Both are completed series. One has been produced by the BBC and the other by forensic engineer Sean Brady. And they both deal with Apollo 13, the moon mission that didn't quite go to plan. If you have an interest in that specific mission, check out 13 Minutes to the Moon and Saving Apollo 13. Both great productions with excellent info and both worth your time. Second, If you are into electricity, and who isn't, two German recommendations around electromobility. From all the way south, there's Electrify BW and going strong for over five years, Clean Electric. And last but not least, one of my personal favorites, Ologies by Ellie Ward, where on every single one of her several hundreds of episodes, she talks to a different scientist of a different field, from things like maritime archaeology to forest etymology to things like biomineral biomin biomineralogy. Every time I listen, I get a ton of new insights and ahas. And as a bonus, it's amazingly fun to listen to. So check these out. And back to Yusuf. So here we go. Thank you, Chris. Listen to those podcasts. They're down here somewhere. There. There.
If you're curious about how to spend time in the kitchen, Katsatsi prepared another genius way for you. Here are our kitchen hacks. You love pasta, but you are tired of the same red sauce again and again? Making your own pesto could be an alternative. Start with chopping some herbs, classic as basil as I use here. Other herbs are great as well, for example wild garlic. Don't skip this step as it opens up the aroma. You also need nuts. Traditionally it's cashews, but I love walnuts as well. Chop them slightly. Take some good and tasty olive oil, add the herbs, the nuts and some salt. Use a mixer to blend everything together. That's it. Cook some pasta and flavor it with your fresh made pesto. Play around with different kinds of herbs and nuts. Tip: Leftover pesto can be kept in the fridge if the pesto is covered with oil on the top. Enjoy! Last time we had the cybersecurity weather forecast. This time we have Kalisi with her fun with security fuck ups. Like, I'm just fucking up. Come on here! This is fun with security issues. Today we have a really nasty piece of ransomware for you. In 2017, it caused a nationwide outage of computers and banks and other big companies. And only a few months later, it hit Maersk really hard, which ended in a big chase for the last backup of the system, finding it in Ghana and flying it in. You might have already guessed it, it's not Petya. In contrary to Petya, not Petya, was able to spread through the system by itself. This was possible with the help of Mimikatz and Internal Blue. NotPetya is a ransomware itself. It overrides the master boot record of a system by a custom bootloader that starts a kernel which encrypts the master file table. And voila, the system files are not readable anymore. Want to hear more about this story? There's a really, really nice episode from Darknet Diaries. It's episode number 55. Everything has to come to an end, and so do we. The 25th of May is the official Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Towel Day. But before we leave, feel free to leave a comment behind, uh, way down here, but here's the subscribe button as well, and follow us on Twitter over there. Um, my name is Yusef, and thanks for watching. I hope I'm using this right. Uh.